Hello bitches, welcome back to another draw with me in celebration of the Lunar New Year, which was actually last week. I'm going to be doing another Asian related spread. This is the first one I did more specific on my Asian American childhood. But today I wanted to kind of just talk about my experience being an Asian American living in America and First of all, I would like to apologize ahead of time that while I love my new glass dining table, one of the drawbacks of having one is now you all see my damn leggings and feet beneath the table. So I apologize ahead of time because I'm going to be cropping into the sketchbook a few times because I am a leg shaker and my legs just don't stop fucking shaking when I get super excited into drawing. So just a little bit of a heads up. And another thing I would like to apologize for is that the lights are going to be flashing because I don't know why this always happens, but today was actually a particularly windy day where the trees outside were distorting the sunlight consistently. So I am so sorry for this. Your girl is going to be investing in a new lighting system eventually. So please skip to this time frame if you have any sort of sensitivity towards flashing lights. So for those of you who don't know, my family is originally from Hong Kong and I was born in New York after my parents immigrated to New York in their teenage years. At first I was just like, why don't I just talk about Cantonese traditions and culture? But then I thought about it twice and I was just like, no, I think I need to talk about my own personal story and experiences growing up as a Cantonese American girl in America because I feel like that's something that I haven't really ever talked about or touched often. A lot of my friends who got to know me in my later teen to young adult years actually had no idea that I actually spoke and understood Cantonese and they kind of just assumed that I was a whitewashed Asian, which I feel like is fair to assume because I feel like I've really improved my English and speaking throughout the years to the point where I feel like I can make people believe that I just don't understand any Cantonese at all. But the truth is, is that I actually grew up with Cantonese as my first language and English as my second. And I was actually really bad at speaking English and not even speaking at all when I was a young girl. I was just shy. I didn't even speak in general. So I think people just assumed that I was either super shy or mute or probably had some social anxiety issues. So in my elementary to middle school years, I don't think I've really ever experienced any forms of aggressive, racist, bullying, but I've of course experienced your typical dismissive racist remarks from other kids, whether if it was from looking at your seaweed snack and asking why that smells like shit, or why your eyes are so small and why you can't open your eyes any larger. I was originally mainly raised in Queens, New York, where it was fairly diverse in all different sorts of cultures, backgrounds, and ethnicities, and it really wasn't until in my middle school years where I moved into a more predominantly half white, half Asian sort of neighborhood where I started to feel the divide between races to some degree and it wasn't really that bad like compared to other stories that I've heard but of course I still just felt the implicit biases of other people and their assumptions about Asian people or whatever. There was this one time I was sitting on the school bus going back home from school and there was a girl sitting a few seats back from me who just blatantly said out loud, why are there so many Asian people on the bus? Like as if half of the bus wasn't full of Asians who could hear that. And I remembered from that moment, I just always remembered that line in my head and asked like, what's wrong with Asian people? Like, do you have a problem? And I wouldn't say that I ever really got to the point where I hated being Asian American or I hated being Cantonese American, but I did have moments in life where I just honestly didn't know how to feel about being one. So throughout my high school to college years, I kind of just didn't really think about it too much and I just wanted to focus on being a better artist. I wanted to get into animation and just really wanted to focus on getting into a good school. So a lot of my time between high school to college, my identity was mainly focused upon being just a good artist. I just wanted to draw well, I wanted to animate well, I wanted to do all those things well. I never really thought about parts of my identity beyond just art until later on or more recently in my life. So I feel like throughout that time, I was mainly focused on developing my skills 
and not just art, but also speaking like publicly and writing because a lot of art and animation involves storytelling, which does include pitching out loud and writing stories that you're going to tell to people. So you have to be a better communicator in that sense. So I, that's why I really try to work on my public speaking and just learning to not be shy when speaking to others because that's just kind of how I was when I was younger. I know a lot of people say it's kind of like an Asian thing to be more passive and quiet. I wouldn't deny that, of course, but I wouldn't really link my shyness exactly to my race because my parents did really encourage me to speak out loud more and not to be like quiet all the time but for some reason I feel like I did have some level or degree of social anxiety because of that whole like I was so used to speaking to my family and just not really opening up myself to other strangers that when I did present myself to another stranger, I just really didn't know how to speak to them. So throughout my college years, I was better at expressing my opinions, speaking out loud, writing in general, and just formulating my thoughts into coherent, concise words and sentences. And I feel like during this time is also when people ironically started to assume that I was just this super whitewashed Asian who had no sense of my cultural identity. And I don't blame them once again because I feel like I never really took the initiative to talk about my Cantonese background so it's not their fault but at the same time I just felt like for some reason whenever people hear the way I spoke or just saw the way I wrote they just assumed that I just knew English so fluently to the point that you know I have no sense of Chinese even though I took like over seven years of Chinese class throughout my middle school years and still have nightmares about missing my homework to this day. It even got to the point where there were a few rare occasions where people just actually straight up called me white. In regards to the people who kind of assumed I was a whitewashed Asian, I honestly at first didn't know how to feel about it, but I was also able to somewhat believe why they thought I was super whitewashed. But to the people who actually just called me straight up white, that was when I was just like, um, excuse me. <laughs> the thing I just found problematic about that sentence, especially for my case, was that although I, it seems on a surface level that I might not be super Chinese at all, it totally denies like everything that I've ever been through throughout my life and what my family has gone through and these people who said things like that have no idea what my upbringing was and how I got to this place. So then, more recently, as more Asian Americans started opening up about their stories and sharing their projects, it inspired me to honestly be more open about the culture I grew up in and my background because I realized that although people are ignorant and assume these things about me, at the same time, to be honest, I never really even shared much about my culture or background to begin with, so I can't really blame people who make these assumptions, although I don't think it's right to just assume things about people in the first place, but at the end of the day, people are going to do what they're going to do, and it's really up to you to decide if you want to deal with it or not. And although I'm not going to directly deal with those people who have said those things about me, I can at least do something about it within myself. It's honestly interesting to just observe the spectrum of the types of either racist remarks or just remarks in general that I've received from people throughout my life where it all started off with, oh my gosh, you're Asian? That's so weird. Like, why are you eating that smelly ass shit and weird bubbly drink with black balls in it when now everyone loves that drink? And then all of a sudden now it's more like, oh, you're like so whitewashed. You don't even understand anything about your culture, you uncultured little bitch. Like, I wouldn't deny the fact that throughout my teen years, I did start to distance a little bit away from my Cantonese background only because I feel like growing up in America, that's just kind of the motion of the ocean is you just start doing more American things, just being in the culture that you're in. That especially when my grandparents passed away, that was when I started losing more of the language speaking aspects or like celebrating the holidays with everyone and whatnot. And that's also when I moved to California, so I couldn't even celebrate like the regular Chinese types of holidays with my family around because I was just on the other side of the country. So more recently, I've been trying to find more things within Cantonese culture to just enjoy, whether if it's from the media or the food or learning the language. And let me just tell you that 
Trying to learn Cantonese, the resources out there are so much more limited compared to learning Mandarin, Japanese, and Korean. I feel like there are so many resources out there for learning those languages, but when it comes to Cantonese, I feel like there's so little out there. It's either that or some of the resources are just so outdated that I don't know if it's going to be really appealing, especially for today's generation who are interested in learning Cantonese but want to learn it in the way that that is as fun as people learning Mandarin, Japanese, or Korean. So thankfully, because I am persistent, I have actually found a lot of good films, YouTubers, or just things online randomly that I felt were really helping me feed on my interest in rediscovering my Cantonese side, and I will link them at the end of this video for any of you who are either Cantonese and are also in a similar search, or for anyone who is just interested in learning more about Cantonese or Chinese culture. I also just realized that I've been drawing this whole spread and not really talked or elaborate about what I'm doing. So while I was speaking about very serious topics, it's just like I'm just drawing food in the background, like what is the correlation? But the correlation is of course the fact that there are two split cultures and one person, which is me. So I don't think it takes much to explain, but the left side is my American side symbolized with kind of American foods. And then the right side is my Cantonese side. And I really specifically just chose snacks and foods that are very specific towards Cantonese culture, because once again, I feel like China is so big and there are so many cultures and ethnicities within China that when you say Chinese, it can mean a lot of things. And for me, that is Cantonese. At the end of the day, I know this is super basic to say, <laughs> I'm sorry, but Pinterest quote ahead, but I'm super thankful for all the experiences I've had in my past, whether if they were good or bad, because I feel like it all ultimately motivated me to get to this point where I'm really making a conscious effort to be more appreciative and showing displays of appreciation towards my culture. And I really hope that in the future too, I can see more representation of Cantonese culture or just more Asian representation on the screen or in books or in any sorts of media consumption. I feel like especially with all of the recent Asian hate crimes uprising, I feel like it's becoming more and more important to at least bring more attention to our voices and just even share your own personal stories. And I don't feel like everything has to always be about all these negative experiences you had growing up being Asian American. Like, I don't know, there are great things that I've experienced about being Cantonese American, like growing up and walking around and getting the Dan Tots with my grandpa, or just having dim sum on the mornings of the weekends and just sipping on these lemon tea juice boxes in my grandpa's old tenement apartment. I hate saying this, but in a way I feel special just having these parts of myself that maybe some people might never truly understand. And it is up to me to share that with others. So I think that's something that is really precious about having your own culture. So I feel like for any of you who are currently in conflict about it, like you have something that's super special about you that, you know, no one will really understand. But you have the power to enlighten people with your story. But yeah, if you have any stories of your own regarding your relationship to your culture, I'd love to hear it in the comments below because that's just been something that I've been interested in hearing from others lately. So on the top right, we got haw flakes, which is like a Chinese sweet made from the fruit of Chinese hawthorn. A lot of kids eat these snack and we have dim sum, needs no explanation. Then we have the egg waffle, which is also known as gaidanja. You might see this in a lot of trendy shops. And we have lemon tea, soy milk, and we also have some bala bao and yoksung bao, which are different types of buns and a dan tat, which is an egg tart. Then moving over to the left, we have some avocado, waffle fries, oatmeal with berries, tomato soup, apples, salad, skittles, coffee, tea, avocado toast, and peanut butter, banana, blueberry toast, and me, your bish. 
Anyway, before I end this video, I just wanted to let you all know that all profits made from my Etsy shop for the rest of February will be donated to Stop AAPI Hate to help track and respond to the surge of racism and xenophobia. I feel like last year was already bad enough for many people, so let's try to make this one a little better. So thank you again for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay wholesome, bitches.